Anyway, the important number here is that 13. I'm one, you're two. That means somewhere out there, there are 11 more people walking around, awake. But why can't we adjust our pain settings? Yeah, so I have a theory, Gretchen said, scratching the back of her head. Before she could continue, I heard a familiar voice shout, Gotcha! Followed by an ear-splitting scream. I jumped and turned to see the little girl, Poppy, the same girl from the market, struggling in the arms of a red-faced dwarf. She squirmed and twisted like a cat being dropped in a bath. It was Constable Hemshin, I realized, and Poppy squealed as the old dwarf tried to get her under control. She squirmed and fought, hitting him on his broad head. They were just on the other side of Gretchen's cabin, making it look like the girl had been skulking there when the constable came upon her. Quit wiggling, the constable roared. This is no place for little children to be lurking, breaking into people's homes. You're much too small to be out on your own. You'd make a fine snack for a wolf. He looked up at us. Does this little monster belong to you too? She's Wanda the barmaid's niece, I said. The constable raised a caterpillar-like eyebrow. Wanda is the one who summoned me. She said she found this little bugger in her home. Didn't know who she was. Mommy, the girl said, holding her arms out to Gretchen. Uh, Gretchen said. The constable put the girl down and she ran to Gretchen, wrapping her arms around Gretchen's leg. She was a tiny little thing. Earlier, I had placed her age around five or six, but I think she was actually much older, closer to seven or eight, but small for her age. Her pigtails bounced as she ran, and her blue eyes were impossibly large. So, you know this girl, Hemshin said. You two are new rivals, are you not? You're not trying to abandon this little girl, are you? No, Constable, Gretchen said. This is my daughter, Poppy. My new friend Jonah here didn't know. We only just met ourselves. She looked down at the little girl. What did I tell you about running away? I want you to apologize to the nice constable. Sorry, she said, a lisp evident in her voice. What in the world was going on? The constable leaned over, a giant smile breaking across his granite-like face. I noticed the man had an hourglass tattooed behind his large floppy ear. The details in this game continued to astound me. He patted Poppy on the head. It's okay. I raised two little ones myself. Just be careful, understand? It's not often we get visitors up here, let alone settlers, let alone two in one day. I was going to come and introduce myself. I hear you two are both fishers, correct? Ursula will be happy to have you here. She's the fishmonger. Anyway, there's been gnome sightings in the forest near here. They've attacked before, so we must be vigilant. New quest, the Scourge of Icardi. Stop the imminent gnome invasion. Gnomes, a normally peaceful race of creatures, keep raiding the village of Icardi. Find out why and put a stop to the menace. Reward, 1,500 experience plus additional prizes. This quest is rated medium difficulty. Achievement unlocked. Receive a quest. I shook my head at the sudden announcement. At least the game hadn't crashed this time. What day is today? I asked, realizing I had no idea. It had been a Thursday when Master Gold disappeared. Why Sunday, Jonah? The constable said. You be safe and keep that little bugger under control. The constable walked away. Sunday. That meant the gnomes would raid the village tonight at midnight. Gretchen and I both looked down at the little girl who continued to clutch onto Gretchen's leg. She watched the dwarf disappear around the corner. Why did you say this was your kid? And why did she call you mommy? Jonah, look at the mini-map. As I tried to make sense of it, Poppy detached herself from Gretchen and turned to face both of us. Okay, motherfuckers, the little girl said. Which one of you assholes is responsible for this bullshit? How the fuck did I get here, and how the fuck did I get put in this body?